After an archaeology professor gets stuck in the past, his students must travel back to the 14th century to rescue him. However, their presence could inadvertently change the future. An elderly man drives through the desert, where he almost runs over an injured man who appears out of nowhere. The older man rushes to the dying person who utters Castle Guard, before being brought to the hospital, where he ultimately perishes. After examining the body, the attending physician, Dr. Kova, relays his report to the sheriff, describing that the recently deceased man's organs were all out of order. He then discloses that he had nothing on his person except a medallion with ITC inscribed on it. A man suddenly approaches the two, introduces himself as Frank Gordon from ITC, and says he's come to claim the corpse of Vincent Taub. Elsewhere, Robert Doniger calls Frank, ordering him to retrieve Vincent's body and records immediately. Doniger also asks if Decker was with Taub, but Frank says Taub was all alone. He then tells Stephen Kramer that if news of Vincent's death gets out, ITC is ruined. They try to guess how Vincent ended up in the desert when Robert rudely claims the latter died due to his stupidity. At the hospital, the sheriff asks Frank what castle guard means, since the witness says it was the only thing the dying man uttered, but the latter claims ignorance. In France, Professor Edward Johnston leads an archaeological excavation of the castle guard village near Le Roc Castle. To his students, he explains how the French pushed the English out of France in their very location, while his son Chris stands beside him. Scottish archaeologist Andre Merrick then elaborates that the hanging of Commander Arnaud's sister Lady Claire led France to victory against the English during the Hundred Years' War. Later, Chris heads to Edward's tent and asks his father if something's wrong. Edward is suspicious that his sponsor, Doniger, has been spending too much money on their dig and will have to travel to America to ask him questions. He then instructs Chris not to tell anyone, especially Kate Erickson, insinuating he already knows about his son's infatuation with the student. Edward warns his son that their relationship won't work since Kate is dedicated to archaeology, while he wants nothing to do with it. Afterward, Chris approaches Kate who's busy digging out a tunnel she believes will lead to La Rock. He offers her a beer and hopes Kate has noticed his feelings for her, but she turns him down as he's the boss's son. The next day, Chris rides to the monastery ruins where he finds Merrick and reveals what happened last night. He then complains about how archaeologists are so obsessed with the past and is the reason why his parents split up. However, Merrick argues that the past is better before leading him elsewhere. Merrick then shows him a 600-year-old sarcophagus depicting a one-eared French knight holding his wife's hand which was an unusual practice during that period. Seeing Chris intrigued, Merrick explains that archaeology is about helping people understand where they came from and where they're going. Merrick then marvels at the dead couple before them, stating they've made their own history. Later, an alarm sounds out due to a cave-in at the monastery. Kate and Merrick head down the hole to investigate if the site wasn't contaminated. They discover oil skin containing some documents and a beautiful, yet damaged stone relief. As the monastery starts caving in again, Merrick spots a biofocal lens on the floor and takes it. Afterward, Josh Stern explains that the biofocal lens is Edwards and shows them the signed document by the professor, begging for help. However, they argue it's impossible as Edwards only been gone for two days, but Josh asserts that he ran both items through carbon dating multiple times and is certain they're over 600 years old. Chris immediately contacts ITC regarding his father's whereabouts, but they invite them to fly to the New Mexico headquarters instead. Soon, the team arrives in New Mexico and is escorted to the ITC main office by Kramer. He informs them that Doniger is trying to develop a teleportation machine and shows them the device. Kramer then leads them to a room where the prototype is, describing that in trying to teleport a document from New Mexico to New York, they discovered a wormhole locked to 1357 Castle Guard. Doniger then arrives, explaining that Edward wanted to see the past for himself and is now stuck in the 14th century. He asks the team to go back in time to retrieve him immediately, as it'll become increasingly difficult to locate him if they let too much time pass. He then admits that the wormhole was the reason why they funded their dig at Castle Guard, which caused Edward's suspicions. Frank interrupts them, saying they've already finished prepping the machine and will send his men with them. However, Doniger insists he join the mission to find Decker, much to the latter's dismay. As he leaves, Kramer reminds Doniger of the consequences of traveling through the wormhole, but the latter claims that it's the team's first trip, unlike Tob, who's passed through ten times. However, Kramer argues that they have a right to know, but Doniger dismisses him. In the locker room, Chris confronts Frank about him leaving his father in the 14th century, but the latter asserts he had to leave him lest they both be stuck. Frank then instructs the team to undergo a medical examination and get dressed in period-appropriate clothing. He then introduces them to his former Marine colleagues, Bill Barreto and Jimmy Gomez, stating they need them if things go awry. The team allows Josh to stay 
behind as he fears the repercussions of wormhole travel. However, they persuade their own team member, Francois Dantel, to come as he's the only one who speaks fluent French. Afterward, Kramer instructs them not to bring any modern technology such as weapons and gives them pendant markers to call for their return, explaining that it has a lifespan of 6 hours. Doninger then takes Francois's glasses, stating they weren't around back then, and informs them of the possible discomfort during the trip. The team then steps onto the machine while Doniger, Kramer, and Josh observe. As the device locks in, the team screams in pain as they travel back in time. Soon, they arrive in 1357, where Frank leads them to the forest and instructs them that no one should activate their pendants until they found Edward. Suddenly, a woman runs past them and they discover that English knights are chasing her. The crew quickly hides, but Sir William de Care kills Jimmy before he can conceal himself. De Care then instructs his men to locate the others and find out who they are. Meanwhile, Merrick, Cress, and Kate watch in horror as a knight shoots an arrow at Bill. The marine primes a grenade, but when he's shot by another arrow, he activates his marker to return. Bill returns to the present, where the grenade detonates and destroys the teleportation machine. The archer spots the archaeologists, so Merrick runs in the other direction so the two can escape. After the knights have gone, the rest of the team convenes, where they learn that the marines died during the skirmish. Frank goes to Jimmy's corpse and discovers that his markers disappeared. A frightened Francois plans to activate his marker, but Frank stops him because he needs 40 feet of clearance for the device to work. Frank then emphasizes they must not lose their markers at any cost, and they run to find Merrick. Meanwhile, Merrick hides beneath a concealed cave where he finds the woman inside. As the knights search the area, the French suddenly arrive to attack the English. Merrick grabs the sword of a fallen knight and kills the Englishman who tried to make off with the woman. He's horrified by his actions, but the woman motions him to follow her. In the present, Josh demands to know where his teammates are, but Doniger reveals he's also unaware. However, the latter reassures Josh that ITC has a backup plan. Merrick and the rest of his team find one another, and the woman leads them to the English-controlled castle guard. The archaeologist realizes that they've traveled back to April 4, 1357, when the French besieged La Roque and quickly make their way to the castle to search for Edward. In the present, Josh discovers that the markers are the only things keeping the wormhole open and that his teammates are stuck in the past once they expire. Meanwhile, the team arrives at the square where the English knights spot them. The men chase them through the narrow passage. They are then brought before Lord Oliver Devon, who, upon learning that Merrick is Scottish, remarks on the sudden interest of the Scots in the area, giving away that Edward has also been captured. Merrick tells Devon that Edward is their master and they've come looking for him. Oliver then questions Francois and upon discovering he's French, his men quickly arm themselves. However, Merrick asserts that Francois is their interpreter, but Oliver doesn't believe him and has his knights kill the latter, much to the group's horror. They are then imprisoned and Chris learns he lost his marker. Kate finds Edward sleeping behind a curtain and the team is reunited. Edward reveals that the English found him in the monastery and was only spared because he lied about being a magister, promising he'll make them Greek fire, a combustible compound with flames immune to water. Furious, Merrick argues it could change the course of history since the English are supposed to lose the war. The team then discusses how to return home when Frank tells them they need to go to the field to be able to use their markers. As they try to search for openings in their prison, the guard below them hears the noise and stabs the roof, narrowly missing Frank. Meanwhile, Merrick sees the woman being escorted inside the prison. Kate discovers a hole big enough to crawl through, but Chris refuses to let her go. However, Frank argues that she's the only one who can fit and tells her to do it. Before climbing out, Kate kisses Chris, then crawls up to the roof. However, Kate spots a soldier nearby and loses her balance, causing her to slide down the roof. Thankfully, Chris grabs her through the straw to save her. Kate steadies herself and steps on a foothold. She then swings herself inside and stabs the guard. Another guard arrives to attack, but Kate unlocks the door to let the men out, and they immediately kill the Englishman. The team escapes outside, but Merrick decides to stay behind to save the woman. In the present, the ITC and Josh attempt to repair the machine. Merrick navigates the prison and kills a guard, just as the care arrives and attacks him. Merrick quickly hides in the room where the woman is and asks her to help him reinforce the door. While De Care tries to smash through the door, the two make their way outside and escape to the river. Elsewhere, Kate refuses to leave without Merrick, but Frank tells her that his job is to get the professor and not take care of them. He then asserts they either go and find Merrick or follow him, before realizing they only have two hours left until the markers expire. Concurrently, Kramer detects a faint signal from one of the markers, signifying they're alive. Meanwhile, the team heads to the field, arguing 
arguing about whose marker they'll use. Kate refuses to use hers because she's waiting for Merrick, but they claim they can return for him. They then see the English knights, so they flee. In the river, Merrick tells the woman that the castle will fall tonight. However, she's steadfast in her belief that the fortress will hold for many more years. Merrick asks if she's married and tries to ask if she's seeing anyone, when they suddenly hear the English and quickly make their way back to shore. French knights intercept them and Merrick discovers she's Lady Claire. Then the Englishmen attack them from across the river, but they escape. Elsewhere, the team hides in a house where Kate laments about them murdering people. Suddenly, the English capture Frank and Edward while the couple flees. The knights burn the building, but the pair escape through the roof and run. Elsewhere, Merrick and Lady Claire arrive at the French army's base, where the latter is reunited with her brother, Arnaud de Serval. Meanwhile, an Englishman hides behind the foliage to spy on the French. Lady Claire introduces Merrick to Arnaud, who thanks him for saving his sister. Merrick then says he plans to return to Castle Guard to rescue his friends, but the siblings refuse as it's too dangerous. However, Merrick is adamant, so Arnaud wishes him well and leaves. Merrick wistfully hopes that he and Claire could have met at a different time, and bids her farewell. Claire then asks if he's married, and when he says no, they share a kiss before Merrick departs. The English spy then returns to his unit, informing his captain of the situation. Elsewhere, Chris plans to return to La Roque to save Edward, but Kate tells him he'll die using that route, and suggests he use the tunnel. At Castle Guard, the people depart as the village burns, with Frank and Edward tied to a wagon as prisoners. Meanwhile, the English attack the French base, and Claire flees into the woods. However, some knights chase after her. As Merrick makes his way to Castle Guard, the English surround him, and De Care takes his pendant away. After knocking him out, De Care dumps his body onto the wagon Frank and Edward are tied to. The two wake and inform him that Chris and Kate were killed. De Care then approaches Frank, who instantly recognizes him. The English knight discloses that he knows Tom was sent to kill him, and takes Frank's marker away. Frank begs De Care to spare him as he has a family, but the knight ignores his pleas and kills him. De Care then reveals to the remaining two that he's former ITC employee William Decker. He realizes that Doniger failed to inform them of the dangers of wormhole travel, and explains that in each journey, their DNA gets altered like his, since he used the teleportation device frequently. De Care then states that he can no longer go back to the present because he'll die on the return trip, and claims that this is now his home. De Care throws Frank's marker to the ground and orders the two prisoners to make a Greek fire, lest he kill them. After the knights leave, Edward asks Merrick where his marker is and finds out that De Care took it, leaving them no means of escape. Kate and Chris make it to the monastery, where they inform the monk that they need their help saving Edward, and he lets them inside. Later, De Care takes Merrick and Edward to La Roque and orders them to complete the Greek fire. Much to Edward's shock, Merrick reveals that he had changed history by saving Lady Claire. Atop the castle, Oliver and De Care watch the French preparing their siege. At the monastery, the monks lead the couple to the chamber where the tunnel is supposedly located, but they find the passage that Kate and Merrick investigated during the cave-in. She spots the oil skin containing Edward's note and his glasses, and orders Chris to leave the spectacles because they need to find them in the future. Kate then realizes that the tunnel is located behind the stone relief, and she was the one who destroyed it. Before they enter, Kate asks one of the monks to get Arnaud. Outside, the French fire their trebuchets at the castle. After Edward completes his Greek fire, he's brought to Oliver who orders him to use it against the French. Upon initial fire, the furious Oliver thinks it's a dud, but quickly realizes that Edward made a flaming weapon impervious to water. Impressed, Oliver gives Edward 20 men to help him make more. In the present, Doniger argues with Josh and Kramer, refusing to push through with the repairs as it's become too risky. Meanwhile, the English and French continue their attacks, and they launch their flaming arrows and trebuchets. However, Devon plays dirty and fires unlit arrows at them, causing the French to fall back. The monks make it to Arnaud and informs him of the passageway leading to La Roque, underneath the monastery. In the tunnel, Kate and Chris hit a dead end. Meanwhile, Arnaud and his 20 men travel to the monastery to find the tunnel that'll lead them to victory. In the present, Kramer finds Doniger gathering the team's belongings and realizes he doesn't want to help them return to the present. Furious, Doniger explains he's only protecting the company's interests and pushes Kramer, who hits his head on a steel rod. Merrick discovers that Claire's been kidnapped and is about to be hanged at the battlements to make the French surrender. And Enraged, Merrick decides to rescue her, indifferent to possibly changing history. Arnaud and his men reach the end of the tunnel where they find the couple. Believing he's been tricked, Arnaud is about to kill them when Chris and Kate try to explain that they're on their side. Merrick goes outside and threatens to blow up the castle using his Greek fire-infused torch if they don't release Claire. De Care attempts to stop him, but Merrick throws his torch, causing an explosion. Meanwhile, the blast causes the tunnel to give way, clearing the passage that leads inside the castle. Taking advantage of the situation, the French soldiers run toward the castle. Arnaud and his men arrive at the courtyard, which Oliver sees, immediately 
ordering his soldiers to hang Claire. Chris and Kate rescue Edward and they see Merrick running to save Claire. Meanwhile, Oliver and Arno fight but get separated midway. As Merrick tries to untie Claire's ropes, Decare attacks him. Merrick counters and they end up rolling down the battlements. Oliver and Arno continue their fight when the former suddenly overwhelms the latter. As Oliver's about to deliver the killing blow, Chris grabs and knocks him down. Enraged, Oliver goes after Chris, but Arno grabs the English from behind and kills him. Meanwhile, Kate and Edward open the castle gate and the French soldiers pour in. Decare and Merrick parry with one another when the former slashes off the latter's ear. Decare gets distracted by the oncoming Frenchman. When Merrick realizes that he was the knight in the sarcophagus, empowered, Merrick manages to mortally wound the care. Below, Kate, Edward, and Chris attempt to use the marker, but it fails to activate. Chris learns that the care took Merrick's marker and runs to him, while Kate and Edward run ahead to the field outside the castle. As Merrick searches for his marker on the care's body, the former ITC employee asks the archaeologist with his dying breath to take him home. Merrick then throws his marker to Chris and tells him he's staying behind, stating he's already found his home. As he looks at Claire, in the present, Josh locks Doniger out of the office. However, he makes it inside the machine to stop the teleportation when it suddenly closes, indicating the team activated the marker. Meanwhile, Chris reunites with Kate and Edward as a knight charges at them. Suddenly, Doniger is transported to 1357, where the charging soldier kills him. Meanwhile, Chris, Kate, and Edward safely return to the present. They're greeted by Josh, who is devastated when he doesn't see Francois and Merrick. Soon, the team returns to the Castle Guard excavation where they re-examine the sarcophagus and discover that Merrick and Claire led long happy lives and had three children together, Catherine, Christophe, and Francois. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.